appreciate that you make the Lockout Men podcast show your favorite podcast to listen to. Let's jump right into it. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. So today is not that day for your boy Lockout Men. Driving down the highway, doing about 70 all of a sudden, the truck start to shake, rattle, and roll, and lo and behold, I get a blowout. Pull over to the side, check it out, get out, hit all of my tires, make sure that all my tires is on point, get up to the front of the drive tire, and there it is, a big clump of tire missing. I said, man, okay, no problem. Get on the phone, call my breakdown, let them know what's up. All right, cool. There's a loves down the way. Let's, you know, get it there. Let's get it changed so we can get you home. I get back into the truck. If it ain't one thing, it is another. Big old sign on the dashboard over here talking about, yo, your truck is about to derate in about an hour. I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what? I said, hold on there, Mac. Let me go ahead and see if I can hit you in uh in region when I get up to the loves. That's loves, right? I get up here to the loves right quick, thinking that that good region gonna take care of my issue. And I hit that region, and that region was like, no, not today. Not today. You're gonna actually gonna actually have to put a computer up to me and find out what's going on with me. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's nothing bad, but nothing's good either. Nothing's good when it comes to the dev system. That's why a lot of, you know, a lot of veterans, they 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 really don't like messing with the dev system. If they can if they can delete the dev at all possible, that's they they're going to do that. I drove a truck that didn't have dev, and that bad boy was nice. It was nice. I liked it. But in any case, though, I, I, I'm, I'm posted up. I've been here for quite a while. And I was like, yo, let me go ahead and um, jump on YouTube and see what's going on YouTube. You know, a couple of YouTubers came on. And then one in particular was good old Trucker Brown. Yes, sir. Good old Trucker Brown. He's, he's doing a live feed about his his time at CR England while at the same time giving up some nice, nice jewels, bruh. Are you the best candidate? Is your past three or four year work history completely verifiable? Is there no gaps in it whatsoever? Well, why does that matter? Because if you have gaps, I ain't going to hire you. If you have unexplained gaps, the five star plays, they going to hire you. <clears throat> giving up some nice jewels about uh cr england at the time and the jewels that he was dropping was on point so of course i'm i'm following i'm paying attention i'm 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 listening to him and some of the commenters in the comment session of course came in and they came in with some some questions and some comments and i being the lockout man that I am, decided to piggyback off of the conversation that he was having. Now, look, say what you want about Trucker Brown, man. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes the guy can get on there, he can get on his soapbox and he can do, you know, whatever, whatever, and, and rub people the wrong way. But sometimes... Some of his content is good, you know, especially for the new people that's that's really coming up in here. Let me explain. Like a lot of you new guys that's coming up into this industry, y'all y'all getting inspired the wrong way. Lockout. What do you mean? Well, look, y'all y'all come on here. Y'all see all these TikTok truckers. They over here telling you. Everything is good for them. The vanity for them is all happy, happy, joy, joy. They enjoy trucking. Come on, get in trucking. Yo, go over the lane finder and do this, that, and the third. And, and we can help you get in here and, 
and all like that. But see, what they're not telling you is the real and what you really have to go through in order to get into the industry. Listen, you're brand new, fresh out of the box. You're not gonna you you're not gonna get that top tier position when you come out of school. First thing first, you gotta you gotta find a school. You gotta make up your mind whether or not if you're gonna go through a school or if you're gonna go ahead and go through a company sponsored school. Now let you know if you go through a company sponsored school, they're gonna sponsor the school, but they're gonna wanna get paid back. And you wanna know how? The, how they going to get paid back? They're going to use you. That's right. I said it. They're going to use you. They're going to use the service that you provide for them paying for your CDLs. Now, me personally, I did my homework when I came into the game. I knew I didn't want to be used. So I decided to pay for my own cdls but that doesn't mean that i went in just because i paid for my cdls that doesn't mean that i i went in at the top no even when you pay for your cdls you still got to come in at the bottom and work your way up to the top now some of you are lucky i i talked to a few of you guys and some of you are lucky you know y'all got that chance to work with your father uncle brother grandfather uh, old man down the street and they all got trucks and you grew up around trucks you know how to shift you know how to double clutch you know how to float you know how to do everything but you just don't have your license and you still got to go to school to get them it ain't like how it used to be it could have been also simple then you learn how to drive the truck and then you went in there and read the book. And then you come back with your grandfather's truck. And then you take the road test and boom, you got your CDLs. They ain't doing that no more. They ain't doing that no more. No more coming in and getting your CDLs off the street. You're going to actually, actually have to go to school to get your license. Literally. And schools aren't cheap. I talked to I, I talked to a brother up, up in Canada and the school up there was 30K. 30K. Can you imagine getting your CDLs for 30K? I talked to Haitian. Shout out to Haitian Princess. Her CDLs was 11K. Man, I, I was just talking about mine at, at 50. I, I thought mine cost a lot at 5400. Woo, that was back in 2014. You're talking about cats that's paying upwards of 11 to 30K for, for CDL. Now, if you don't have 11K or 30K or even 54K like myself, then your other opportunity is to find a company that will pay for your license. And then after you pay, after they pay for your license, they'll put you on. There's a lot of companies out here that's offering that, but you got to do your homework and your research on these companies. But I'm about to, I'm about to tell you this, like Trucker Brown said, if you are hungry enough, and a lot of you aren't, let's be honest, a lot of you not hungry. Y'all not hungry. Y'all want to y'all want to see what these TikTok truckers are doing and quote unquote, get inspired, get inspired, get all that other stuff. And y'all just want to jump in, get your license and y'all think everything's going to be gravy. It's not. It's not going to be gravy. You got to understand something. These TikTok truckers, these so-called influencers already have their bag. OK. They already have their bag. They already have it. That's why that's that's why they on here getting the bag just by telling you, oh, you can come into the, in the, into the industry and all ease. They they don't have time. They don't have time and they're not going to take time to to walk you through. Train you, teach you, give you some give you some advice no they doing it for the masses 
They doing it for the masses. And being that they're doing it for the masses, y'all taking the information that they're giving you the wrong way because they're not giving you the they're, they're not giving you all that's in tuned with trucking. They're just telling you the good part of it. Hey, well, you know, taking this load down to the next state and I made forty five hundred dollars just like that. Well, how you made $4,500? How was that broken down? What's your, what's, what's your expenses out of that $4,500? Is that a company driver $4,500 or is that an owner-op owner $4,500? Owner and then, you know, they'll go on, they'll, they'll go places and stuff like that, and they'll be like, oh, it's easy to make six figures. No, it's not. It's not easy, especially if you're brand new out of the box coming in. It ain't easy. You got to work for it. And that's what they're not telling you. They're not telling you that you need to work for the money. What about endorsements lockout? Yeah. What about the endorsements? You know, hazmat. Do you want to drive hazmat? Learn if you drive hazmat, you know, you can't you, you can't go through the city. That easy, straightforward route that'll get you from point A to point B, they won't let you drive through that. How about up in how about up in New York City or or Jersey? There's a lot of those tunnels right there, and you got hazmat, you can't drive through them. You gotta go all the way around to the Lincoln or to the GW Bridge to get over into where you need to be so you can get into the city. They won't let you take a tanker through a truck, uh, take tanker or hazmatic material through the city or tunnels. You got to go around. But you wouldn't know that because nobody told you that. You just thought that, oh, I got my hazmat and everything and I could just drive through the city. And no, no, no. There's signs that you got to pay attention to when you're a hazmat driver. There's additional information that, that you got to be responsible for when you're a hazmat driver. Did you know that you can't even smoke in the truck as a hazmat driver? Did you know that? No. Why? Because nobody told you. So that's other information that you need to get your hazmat you make more money but you also incur more responsibilities same thing with the tankers did you know that dry van can be considered the, the, the products that you drive in a dry van did you know that you might need your tankers for that no nobody told you that well there's some freight that is considered uh that is considered tank that that you need your tanker for in order to drive i mean in order to transport it did you guys know that it doesn't tankers doesn't necessarily has to be a tanker uh tanker trailer it could be a dry van it could be a it could even be a flatbed trailer depending on the freight that you hauling on the flatbed or in the dry van Did you guys know that? Did, 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 did the influencers tell you that? Tell you about that? No? Hmm. Okay. Did the influencers tell you that when you decide to come into the industry of what, you know, which route to take as far as getting your CDL, right? You didn't, did you know that uh, the goal is about getting your CDL? No? They didn't tell you about that because they 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 tell you they quit fast in a hurry tell you how much money you can make out here. They could tell you quit fast in a hurry that the that the bag, you know, the bag is easy to get. But they didn't tell you about that when you come in that that if you get put on through a school or or through a trucking school or through a trucking company that sponsored the school. They didn't tell you that, you know, you're going to have to get there, right? You're going to have to get there. And don't take the Greyhound. Whatever you do, take get